ब्रह्मानंदम परम सुखदम केवल ज्ञान मूर्ति दंदवातीत गगन सदृश तत्वस्यादिलक्ष्यम एक विमलमचलम सर्वधी साक्षीभूत भावातीत त्रिगुणरहित सदगुर तम नमा Good morning dear friends and devotees <coughs> today we are not studying that bhagavatam rather we will be discussing on Bhag- guru because today is the guru purnima and my topic is mad guru sri jagat guru and the guru purnima is the 5th of july in america of course in india it is the night and purnima as uh, sometimes some orthodox people will say purnima is now over but the this is particular this full moon is dedicated to one particular person he is rishi daipayan he is a famous as the veda vyasa he is the son of another great rishi parashara and satyavati though this particular the full moon is dedicated in the name of this daipaya and the veda vyasa because he has given us the veda he didn't compose the veda the complete veda it was the rishis they did but he organized the veda so that is the reason the people they say he is our guru that means one who gives spiritual knowledge is the guru this is the conception Now the question is, can there be many gurus, or there will be only one guru? The answer will be no and yes, both. Why that we will discuss slowly. Or this topic that we are discussing, that Mad Guru Sri Jagat Guru, I have taken that. from the sri sri guru gita is a very famous book is a conversation between the lord shiva and ma parvati and the 37 verse from where i have taken this line it says mannath sri jagannath mad guru sri jagat guru mamatma sarva bhutatma tashmai sri gurave namaha and when he translate this my master is the teacher of the whole world man nath is my master nath is the jagat na jagannath and again he is repeating almost the same thing in a different term he is using mad guru sri jagat guru the mad guru is the preceptor of the whole universe my guru is the preceptor of the whole universe my soul is the soul of all beings the pure vedanta there is only one there cannot be many so that is the concept about the guru so this question you can guru be many so they will say no there is only one so i offer my pranam to that guru Lord Shiva, while teaching his consort Ma Parvati, said, "Is a, again the verse thirty-six of the Guru Gita. Na Guru Odikam Tattam. The Guru is the ultimate truth. There cannot be higher than that. Anything higher than that. Na Guru Odikam Tapah. The spiritual austerity that the people are." practicing that is the highest goal the guru tatva gyanat param nasti and there cannot be any other superior truth than the knowledge of the guru tatva gyana tatva means the truth gyana knowledge the knowledge of the guru and as if to explain this word shankaracharya in his mani ratna mala the seventh verse he is asking the question and giving the answer he is asking ko ba guru 
who is guru then he is giving the answer yo hi hita upadeshta yo hi hita upadeshta he who gives spiritual advices hita i have translated as spiritual why the highest the good is in spiritual knowledge all other knowledge is that we the mundane knowledge the the knowledge of this world different varieties but those knowledges are limited after some time it is of no use so that is the reason the highest knowledge the hita the best thing that will happen to a particular person through spirituality and again the sloka with which i started this class the brahmanandam paramasukhadam who is the guru a guru gita again 49 words it says that one who has attained the bliss of brahman the supreme joy he is pure he who is established he is the embodiment of wisdom he who is beyond the duality of the world he who is broad like the sky the goal of i am that tattvamasi the goal means he is the brahman one eternal pure immovable witness to everything beyond the mind free from three gunas he is my guru so when we are reading this it cannot be a human the guru cannot be human the obviously guru cannot be many bhagwan sri ramakrishna very categorically very clearly he mentioned satchidananda guru the guru is satchit ananda by satchit ananda we know we indicate brahman the brahman is the guru no other can become guru so this is the reason when the we put that question once again what would be the answer whether guru is one or guru is many so we can clearly say guru is one all pervasive consciousness now again we find shami vivekananda in one of his lecture he said i quote a real guru is one who is born from time to time as a repository of spiritual force which he transmit to future generation through successive links of guru and shishya from the swami ji's words we can get another answer to the same question can guru be many yes the swami ji is telling time to time the guru comes and he generates the another guru and in different time different gurus are coming in the bibhik chodamani also we find the shankaracharya he is mentioning about the quality of the guru what is the quality of the guru in vivek churamani 33 verse shankaracharya says shotriya abrijina akamahata ya brahmavid uttama brahmani uparata shanta nirindhana ibanala ahetuk daya sindum bandhum anumadam satam So as Swami Vivekananda said that the spiritual, the the spiritual force should be there. Otherwise, it is not possible. So, what is the spiritual force? The power of spirituality, these qualities. The first, he should be well versed in the scripture. What is the scripture? The knowledge of those people. they have realized the realized souls their knowledge the scripture is nothing but the record of the realized souls they have realized many things they have given it and their disciples have recorded it now a person who wants to be a guru should also tally 
whether his realizations, his knowledge is telling with that or not. That's called Sotriya, well versed in the scripture. Second, Abhijina, pure. A guru should be pure. In many different uh, the fields, we'll say, there are good people, very, very successful people, but they don't need that purity in that way. They need the capacity to understand and explain their own subject. That is sufficient, but for the spirituality, the main thing is purity. That's, it says, or brijina. Or means negative, brijina. Brijina means the sin. There is no sin. And what is this sin? He is not having any attraction or the desire for the saints' objects. That is called or brijina. That is why he is pure. The next word, akamahata. He is free from any lust, any desire. And brahmabid uttama. The Brahmabid Uttama means the knowledge of the Brahman that is there, but at the same time, he is having the highest knowledge. Understanding is very clear. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna used the word Bigyani. Jnani and Bigyani. Jnani means who is having the idea about a subject, about something. He is a Jnani. But Bigyani he can utilize that knowledge and that is manifested in his own life also that is called bigyani he imbibed that knowledge here the word brahmavid uttama brahmani uparato shanta nirindhana ibanalaha and giving an example of a fire which is burning but you cannot see the flame or the smoke but that fire is there it is like that. The person who has realized the Brahman, the Guru, outwardly expression, nothing is there. It's completely as if very ordinary. But inside that knowledge, that conception is very clear and constant every moment. Brahmani uparata shanta. Why shanta? Why calm? Because he is not having any desire. He has achieved everything. And therefore he is calm. When you see the ocean, if there is no wind, strong wind, there is no ripples. There is no... Uh, that, uh, mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah. Waves. Sorry, ah, I forget. There is no waves. Why? Because no wind. The similarly, when there is no desire, there is nothing, no activity in the mind. He becomes Shanta. Ahitu Kodaya Sindhu. Now, this Shotriya, Abrijina, Akamohata, he is versed in scripture, he is pure, he is free from desire. This is all inside. How I will understand that person? External behavior, that is also the proof. Ahetu kodayashin, no hetu, no cause. But still, his affection, his love goes and embraces each and everyone. He prays for everyone. His mind is constantly thinking, and that's why it says, Bandhu Anamadam Satam. He is friend, he is friendly to anyone who is good. So that is the way we can understand the who can be a guru. So we find that the guru is like this. Swami Vivekananda said, there can be many gurus. But also he said, the repository of spiritual forces, that should be there. Anyone cannot claim that I am a guru. He may claim but we cannot consider him as a guru unless we see all these qualities present in him or her. So this is the guru we find. And the question that we first raised, whether guru can be one and the guru can be many, it may be no and also yes. Why no? Because guru is Brahman, guru is God, guru is Sachidananda. 
But at the same time, it is yes because the same Satchidananda, same Brahman, he is taking different form in different time and coming down in different forms to spread the spiritual knowledge. So yes and no to that answer. The Vedantavadins, they also, their concept of the Guru is there. Without Guru, it is impossible. Shankaracharya, he very clearly mentioned, maybe that you have already realized the Brahman. Maybe that you have the knowledge. But even then, if you are not going through the Guru, your that knowledge cannot be taken as a perfect, as a success. We see that example in the life of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. He realized, we know that those who have read the biography of Sri Ramakrishna, before any guru came, he already realized that Brahman, he was worshipping Goddess Kali, and the intensity of his devotion, the one day it took it in such a condition, they wanted to kill himself at the feet of the Goddess Kali, because the separation, it was unbearable. So that in the Upanishad also we find the rishis, when they have reached very close to the truth, they are asking, remove this golden plate and let me be face to face with the truth. The same way the Sri Ramakrishna, young man who was constantly practicing devotional way to see the mother, divine Kali, that day the mother revealed herself. How? Sri Ramakrishna was worshipping an image, Goddess Kali. But the when that Kali, after that prayer, revealed herself, it was only the knowledge. It was only the light, light effulgent. And it came from that mother, that image, and engulfed everything. So from the Dvaita, to Advaita. But again it comes back to Sri Ramakrishna, he becomes the Guru. Why? Those knowledge, those qualities, that godliness, it entered into that person and he became the Guru. So Guru is one in truest sense, at the same time, in different time for different people, he is also many. Advaita Vedantin, there's a very strong way they always say, there is only one, there cannot be two. They also accept Guru. In the Ashtavakra Samhita, those who are following that class, you know, in the Ashtavakra Samhita, that is the highest, and it's a strongest way of expression, Vedantin expression. And there was a king, the king of Mithila, the Janaka, the very famous, almost all the Hindus and Indians, they know this name, Janaka. He was the foster father of Ma Sita, who became the wife of Sri Ramachandra. So all these traditional stories, most of the Hindus, they know, and many people, they know. This Janaka was a king. But in those days, we find in the stories and the Puranas, Majority of the kings were also a very spiritual seeker. Many of them, they were Brahma Jnanis, the Noah of Brahmans. Janaka was one of them. When he was practicing the spirituality, he came to know from someone in a flash of and then wink, one can realize the Brahman. And the expression was, the one he can realize the Brahman in a time as a man jumps on the saddle of the horse, that much time. Janaka was interested and it would I like to know that. He started searching for the Guru. Many Gurus came. They could not satisfy him. Then ultimately Ashtavakra entered and he said, Janaka, I can teach you but you have to come with me. And they went, I think, you can imagine, Janaka of course took his horse because that was the thing when you 
jump on the saddle by that time he will get that uh, brahma jnana so obviously they went and they went inside the jungle in a lonely place then the guru ashtavakra said to his disciple janaka see i am going to give you the brahma jnana but you know the moment you will realize that there will be no two there will be no guru there will be no disciple therefore before i give you that knowledge give me my the pranami you know that uh, this is the tradition the disciples are supposed to give something to the guru because the guru is giving them the spiritual knowledge and the disciples will give some material thing for the guru to sustain janaka was we can imagine you are so excited he was thinking right now i am going to get the brahma jnana and in the emotion he said oh guru i give you the whole country that i rule my whole property it is yours i give this body my mind my everything at your feet please give me that knowledge and that great guru ashtavakra he played in a very nice way he said well remember that you have given everything to me and now wait i will come and give you the knowledge and he left janaka was waiting 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 days passed night passed you can imagine how he was thinking now if you see how things are happening in the beginning he was agitated what is this i gave everything and he is not keeping his words but he is not moving he has the faith the first thing is the faith and the words of guru guru will come he said i am coming wait so he is waiting now he is analyzing his mind how he is analyzing why should i be in the anxiety what is happening in my country in my land i have given it to guru it doesn't belong to me now if the enemies are coming and attacking and grabbing let them do it belongs to my guru i don't have any responsibility now so he is doing the bichara and then slowly withdrawing his mind all the senses from all sense objects and slowly his mind is becoming pure what is that purity without the thought of this worldly things mind is pure so janaka was purifying his mind so by withdrawing his mind withdrawing his thoughts look at the process guru didn't do anything he only said i will give you the knowledge in exchange you give me something so that i will ac accept that is a pranami guru pranami and janaka gave after that it is janaka only who is practicing spirituality first agitation second he is slowly concentrating and by discriminating i don't have any problem anything happened to this country let it be second he who am i to think because i have given my mind to him then third he said why i am thinking that body is paining and i am standing here for such a long time days and days what is it he thought body also doesn't belong to me i have given the body to my guru so obviously i am not supposed to feel the pain like this it goes from the gross to the subtle and ultimately where he goes to his own mind to his own consciousness everything was ready guru came and he said janaka you have achieved that knowledge i am that the whole thing and whatever that i was thinking i am the king i am the janaka this is my body this is my mind everything goes away in a flash that knowledge comes i belong to the consciousness so that is the way the vedantin gurus they will teach but another story that i have already told in the bhagavata i'll repeat over here and that is called 
the guru cult begins from then how you know in bhagavata the brahma not brahman brahma is the first creator and he was busy in creation and he created with the many other things four sons he thought his sons should be like this and they became famous as sun brothers because their name was given with sun sanaka sananda sanatan sanat kumar the sun sun so people used to call them sun brothers if you have four sons you can give these names the sun brothers that these sun brothers they were mixed with two qualities just like the human though they were divine the janaka created them out of his own mind but the qualities are two one is satya and the raja because of the raja guna they were having the attraction to these worldly things because of the satya guna they were fighting you were trying very hard to withdraw the mind from the sense objects they knew that if we go and enjoy the sense objects we will be bound so that knowledge was there so they wear mumukshus what is the mumukshu those who are trying to understand the truth they are mumukshus so they started practicing trying hard but it was so difficult maya is pulling so hard because the power of god what is this maya power of god can we the ordinary people fight with that unless and until god himself gives us the strength to fight with maya to go beyond maya is it possible so naturally they were confused they tried hard that they came to their father the father was busy four of them they came and they told father we are trying very hard can you please teach us the secret of yoga what is the secret of yoga how to detach the mind from the sense objects then the brahma thought why not i give this question to my creator and let the creator come and give them this teaching so he will be their guru i am their father i have give, given them many training but now let my creator come and give that knowledge so he prayed to that supreme being there is no name the supreme being so brahma was created by the supreme being how he created just thought and brahma was and then so that is the way brahma understood i have to contact him and he prayed and prayed meditated then the supreme being appeared now here in the bhagavata the first time the supreme being is having some form before that there was no form the supreme being came in the form of a big swan hamsha hamsha means the swan and this swan means this is a symbol of course he could come in any other form he came as a swan because that the symbol was one person who is living in the world but untouched by this worldly things he is a swan he is a paramahamsha this is the concept of the hindu he came as a swan so obviously when they were asking and they repaid respect but at the same time young people they were curious they asked him who are you so from here goes on the guru shishya dialogue the he told them see there is only one there cannot be two that all that you see is nothing but the manifestation of that one you know it very well you should not ask me this question this is a wrong question they understood then he said this is the knowledge that he gave so how the guru teaches this two only one gives the knowledge and then the technique to realize that knowledge understand that knowledge what is the technique then he said withdraw your mind 
and put that mind to me. Know me as Vishnu. The Vishnu means all pervading consciousness. Know me as Vishnu. So when we think in this way, we draw your mind from the same subjects and give it to me. And the Vishnu form he showed the first time. There's a different story. He showed them that this is the Vishnu form, afterwards it came. Withdraw the mind from the same subjects, give it to the God. That is the technique. And the goal, the knowledge. What is the knowledge? One. So this is the way it goes. The Guru gives in this way. We find the Bhagavad in the Gita, the Krishna is also addressed as Jagat Guru. Krishnam Bande Jagat Gurum. So we worship the Lord Krishna, who is the teacher of the whole world. So how it is possible the teacher of the whole world? Then it says, what Guru does? Remove the ignorance. How Guru do that? In two processes, just now we discussed, giving true knowledge and teaching the technique to rea realize the truth. In the Bhagavad Gita, we find Sri Krishna as a guru, he's having a lot of patience. And he knew the, what is going to happen. So he was not hurrying at all. So when you read the Bhagavad Gita, we miss this picture. In the beginning, when the Arjuna, his disciple is going on, giving the arguments, why we should not fight, they came for that particular purpose. The preparation for so many years, for that particular purpose. When everything was ready, the main person, Arjuna, he started thinking in a completely different way. It happens in the mind of the human being. We have seen husband and wife. It is so difficult to get uh, in, in the Belur Mahat, President Maharaj, uh, the blessings as a diksha. So you have to write to contact them, write to them, they will reply. You have to read some books, then they will uh, take you some a uh, sort of uh, interview and then only you will get a date for the diksha. When everything was done, the husband, wife, they went and the family, then suddenly that husband, he thought, no, it is not my time. It is time has not come, so I should wait. Who told him when the time will come? The Guru is there waiting for him to give the initiation. But suddenly this thought came in his mind. Another young man, I send him to Brihaswaranandaji Ji Maharaj, the 10th president of the order. Many of you know, he was a great soul. And when he went, it was all final. He entered inside to take the initiation. But suddenly, when the guru was almost coming, he stood up and said, asked, like he read in the book of Vivekananda's life, sir, I have a question. Vireshananda Ji Maharaj stood, have you seen God? So if you are going there to take the initiation, you should have asked this question before. But at that moment he asked, then the Vireshwanda Ji Maharaj told his secretary, ask him to meet me afterwards, take him out. So he didn't get the initiation. He came, came to me because I knew him. So he told uh, why he has not given me the answer. When Vivekananda Narendranath asked this question to Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna said, why he should not? I told, I, do you think you are Narendranath? Are you having that purity? Are you having your mind that way ready to get the answer? Become Narendranath fast. Then come and ask this question. You don't have the idea what is God realization. Suddenly asking this question and disturbing the flow of the mind of the Guru. But then people don't understand. So when you are giving the initiation means you are pouring the strength of the spirituality into the, the another person. A lamp is, another lamp is now getting the light. So the human, but it goes like this. 
So naturally the guru is that time completely submerged into that. And if you are asking the question, and if you are behaving in a different way, this is the problem. So guru is giving you the truth and also the teaching the technique. And in the Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna's life, we feel the same thing. In the same tradition, he is also following. And the tradition of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna that we have seen, first and foremost, almost in everywhere, wherever he will go, where whomever he is meeting, the, he will tell, there is God, believe me. And God can be seen. You can talk to God. You can move with God, with great, his own realization, because he was God himself. He was telling that to the people. Even then, people were not ready. Why? You know, those who have read the biography of Sri Ramakrishna, you know that he used to climb on the terrace and used to call for the people, I am waiting for you, please come. And what is that? What he wanted to give, this knowledge? Because the shisha also should be prepared, otherwise it is not possible. If you want to, the sow the seed, and you should see that it is not falling on the stone. On the stone it cannot germinate. It needs that particular soil. The same way, the Guru Shakti, the power of the Guru, this is the holy name of a God. It should get that particular mind. Sri Ramakrishna, he wanted to prepare that mind. He first said, God is there. And whom you call God, I call, whom you call Brahman, I call that as Mother, Ma Kali. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also, he said, the Brahman and Bhagavan are the same. There's only two approaches according to the human and the capacity. The one is, one approach is called Vedanta, and in the Vedanta they go on analyzing, and then ultimately they reach to that Brahman, and then the, with the devotional path, it is so easy, they go on thinking that God is eating, God is talking, God is walking with me. So that is a very wonderful kind way they will go and reach to the same place where they will say, see, the God and the Brahman, the consciousness are the same. Sri Krishna, he used to give this particular path, he used to advise this particular path to the devotees because the devotees don't have the time. If you have to constantly go on discriminating, you cannot work in the office. You cannot have a business. You have to segregate yourself and then constantly think that I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am the soul divine and constant in that way. It's a completely different system. How many of us can follow that? And without getting preparation, without getting that type of mind, the strong mind, if we try to do that, it will be hypocrisy. We won't understand that unnecessarily. So that is the reason this time, then the modern time, Sri Ramakrishna said, this time it is the bhakti. And what type of bhakti? Naradiya bhakti. So technique he is giving. He, is, he gave the truth. He gave the knowledge. What is that knowledge? God is there. That is the knowledge. Brahma Satya. The God is there. And what is the technique? The technique is Naradiya Bhakti. What is the Naradiya Bhakti? It is the mixture of knowledge and devotion. What is that knowledge? It is the discrimination. And devotion? It is only love. So when these two mingle, this is the best way. And Sri Ramakrishna said, in this yuga, at this time, that is the best path. The dry thing, he himself said, I don't like that. The dry path only, I don't like. Why should you be in, like that? 
Sometimes people heard it has been recorded. He is talking with the divine. The, he used to call that as a mother. Mother, don't make me dry monk. What is the dry monk? I am the Brahman. I am not this. I am not that. He told, I, I cannot become like that. I don't like to become like that. So the technique is Naradiya Bhakti. What is the Naradiya Bhakti? Tad Arpita Akhila Acharata. Tad Vishmarani Parama Kulata Iti. Tad Arpita. Tad means that God. And he is not, Narada is not mentioning. Narada is a great devotee. But at the same time, he is not mentioning he or she. He is telling that, that Brahman, that consciousness, that supreme. So there, tad arpita akhila acharata, offer him your all actions, everything. Why? Completely detaching yourself. Now, if you remember the story of the Janaka, he was detaching himself. How? Oh, there may be so many problems in my country, in my land. But no, I don't have any problem because I have given it to the Guru. I have nothing to do. By discrimination, withdrawing. Now the people are thinking, if I am not here, what will happen? What will happen? When you were not there, this world was there. When you won't be here, this world will be there. Nobody will remember. Only a few people they will remember for the few few days. That's all. So when you think in that way, that you are withdrawing yourself, the bichara goes, that is called Naradiya Bhakti. Tad arpita akhila acharata. Oh God, whatever I do, whatever I think, whatever I perform, everything I give it to you. Please hold my hand and guide me. Arpita akhila acharata. And second, tad vishmarane paramo bhakulataiti. When you forget that God, even for a moment, you feel as if you are without oxygen. Paramo bhakulata. You are almost dying for that, that love, that one pointed love. So these are the two goes together. And that is the Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he is teaching in this way. And he is also like the Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna gave that knowledge in the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Many of you know. And what was that knowledge? Atman. Knowledge of the self. Na jayate, mriyate, vakadachin. All that he is not born, he is not leaving. Nainam chindanti shastrani, nainam dati pavaka, na chainam kledayantapa, na shoshayati maruta. These are all very famous slokas of the Bhagavad Gita. Even the children are also memorizing this. I am that infinite soul. Even the blade cannot cut me, fire cannot burn me, water cannot wet me. I am that purified. Purity is there. What the purity? Because no word. Complete purity means complete spirituality. No desire for the worldly things. Now Sri Ramakrishna is teaching. Let me complete this. The Sri Krishna, he gave that knowledge. Then he said, Karma Yoga. Third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is Karma Yoga, not Dhyana Yoga. With the karma yoga, not bhakti yoga, karma yoga. And what is that karma? Because in this modern age, the human mind is constantly agitated. So many things are going on. I have seen the young people constantly glued to that small screen, uh, that uh, the, the t uh, telephone, the smart telephone. And they are going on developing so many things in the telephone. And these young people, they cannot look around. They can't hear anything. They only glued to that, going on playing with that. What is it? The mind is a completely the force of mind, the energy of mind is a wastage. So obviously to withdraw that mind from that, I have read in the newspaper 
that a young boy killed his mother, poor boy, poor mother. She could not give him that money to purchase that smartphone. Killed the mother, can you imagine how low the mind goes only for that desire, the so strong desire? And that is the reason the karma yoga. What is the karma yoga? You perform action, but give the all result at the feet of the God. So this continuously, no burden is there in your mind. You are free. That is the karma yoga. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he taught his disciple, who was of the bend of mind, uh, the jnana, Vivekananda, but he told, tell me, if you can see God by closing your eyes, can't you see God with open eyes? What the Vedanta says, God has created this, manifestation of the God, all religion says like that, then why you fight? Why don't you see God in everything? Whole attitude will change. Behavior will change. So that is the teaching of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. As the, that is why he is Jagat Guru. Mannata Sri Jagannath. Madguru Sri Jagat Guru. When I took the initiation from a Swami, Srimad Swami Bireshwarananda Ji Maharaj, so this is also a tradition of the Hindu. They will never say, ha, Birasharananda, ne, they will never. So they will say with great respect, because he has given me the knowledge by which I am going to get liberation. Shall I not pay that respect? So they say, Srimat. This is the greatest respect in Sanskrit. Then Swami, because he is a sannyasi. Bireshwarananda G in the uh, Indian language, G means the, uh, applied to the respected one. G Maharaj. And the Maharaj again, the, like the Swami, that's a Maharaj. So Bireshwarananda G Maharaj, the, he was the 10th president. And when I first saw him, I thought, oh my God, this person is going to be my guru? And I met him over there, the small, stature and he is talking with other people. I imagine, as most of the Indian people they imagine, Guru must be the long white hair and also the long beard and he will be sitting a good health and sitting uh, uh, in a squatting on some uh, the seat. Then he will go and bow down to him. It is not like that. His figure was very small and he was sitting on a chair and with a stick in his hand. When I went, I saw and oh, this is my guru. Then slowly, when he started talking, oh my God, everything started changing. And will you believe today, I took initiation in 1975. And today I can say that particular moment, that particular day, everything changed. The completely because of his association. As a very, you can say the very, you know, he's, he was also lean and thin. He is sitting, almost people will ignore him. But his presence that brought the peace to everyone and the so many devotees, hundreds and hundreds every moment, right from the morning till the dead of night, hundreds of people are coming and looking at him, just looking at him. And then they are getting peace. When they are going back, no conversation, nothing, a little bit of the talk. But when they are going back, all of them are happy. I also felt that happiness just in that company. And that proves that his mind was broad like the sky. It's not the body. It is not how he looks. It is the knowledge. So the guru means that knowledge. And let me tell you uh, the one incident that happened with this Guruji. In the Ramakrishna mission, they never discloses all this. And then they always try to say, you know, this guru means Ramakrishna. Never claim that 
we are gurus. Guru means Sri Ramakrishna. But the power of that God, it flows through. The one Swami, it was the day and the moment he passed away, Brishwaranda Ji Maharaj, and his holy body was taken to the cremation ground in the Belurmat itself. And I was sitting, it was terrible for me to go and see that the, his body is burning in the fire. So I didn't go there. So I was sitting near to his, the door of the room where he stayed in the Belur Mart. Then another Swami came, very elderly Swami, he came and sat by my side and he started talking. But I was not in a mood to talk, but he said, you know, this Swami who is your guru, he saved me. And then he told uh, one incident, he was in charge of a center and he wanted something, but it was not passed by the headquarters, Belurmar. It's a big organization, so official things are there. So he got agitated. Why my request has not been accepted? And he decided to leave the order. And, but the Bhirasharananda ji, he is there. And if you go and touch his feet, he lost an eyesight at and, and that age. So he couldn't see, but the moment you touch, he could feel and you uh, uh, you'll ask, who are you and where you are going? So if he asks that, you cannot say that I am leaving the order and going away. So he decided uh, within a, one or two days, Bhrishananda Ji Maharaj going to Delhi, he will go to the airport. Many devotees also go to see him off in the airport. I will also go and that, when so many people will be there, I will also touch the feet and from there I will leave. That happened and that Swami was still there in our order. He said it, will you believe? So many people were touching his feet. But the moment I touched his feet, immediately he started telling, oh, so much of ego, so much of ego in you, just something has happened. Some senior brothers have said something and you are leaving the house. You were brought up over here. Now it is time for you to give to the family and you are going away, thinking to go away. No one could understand what he is talking, but the Swami told I could understand that all those words for me. Then the Swami, how could he feel that? The moment he touched uh, his feet, even in that chaotic situation. And immediately he said, I asked you, go back and stay till I come back. I will come and talk to you. So he had to go back. He had to stay and wait for the Swami to come back. In the meantime, slowly his mind calmed down and he started thinking the God's work that I am doing why the ego should play over here. If the authority is asking me to do it, that means it is the command of the God. Who am I to say no to it? Everything was subtle. So this is the subtle way things goes. The Guru Shakti is there, the power is there, and we have to believe it. Today is a very holy day, and we should understand that when this type of occasion comes, the obviously we should try to purify our mind as maximum as possible. How to purify our mind? Those who have taken the initiation, taken the name, the holy name of the God, do the japa as maximum time possible. And this particular day, one day, and they make, fix a, a number. So today we will do that 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, like that at least today we will do like that, whole day. The, by that way you can purify your mind and the moment your mind is purified, because God's name, when it pours in, goes in, the thought of the world goes out. The thoughts of the go world goes out, you become pure. The moment you become pure, the reflection of that divinity will be there and it will be peace. What is the goal of the spirituality? Peace, joy, happiness. Why? Because the, our souls, our creator, the Brahman, 
the God, He is the totality of peace and joy. Anandeva Kalu Ivani Bhutani Jayante. In the Taitri Upanishad, it says, from the Ananda, from the joy, all this creation has come, and we'll go back to that Ananda. That Ananda, that peace is our goal. Thank you, friends. Thank you, devotees. Thank you for attending this class. And if there are any questions, then I. There are four, five, four, five questions, uh, First is Satya ki Guha. If God is considered mother, is it wrong to pray for some gains like health and well being of loved ones or parents or good result or exam? We are told not to ask any material things from God. Satya ki Guha. Mm. Satya ki Guha, I think. Ah, Satya ki Guha this is a very good question. If you consider God as mother, then why you should not pray to the mother? You have every right. You have every right to ask the mother, I don't want liberation this moment. I want this, so please give me. Give me health, give me prosperity, and uh, also the good uh, things about my children. You can ask, why not? If you have that confidence and faith, you, you can. Though I will tell you the one incident that in the life of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, one young boy used to come and he will never talk to Sri Ramakrishna, he will never pray anything. Others used to come and ask for this and that. Sri Ramakrishna noticed him and said, hey, you never ask anything from me, what do you want? No sir, I am feeling ashamed to ask that, but tell me, what is that? Then he said, I want to be a rich man, I am very poor. And in the society, nobody give me any respect. Can you give me the blessing so that I will become rich? Sri Ramakrishna blessed him and he became a very rich person. And this thing happened in Calcutta. Why not? And about the ultimate thing when they say, that is for mukti, that they can wait. <laughs> this moment, if you want this, no problem. Tell mother, give me this. You can. Next is uh, Sumit Soni, why our faith scatters, shatters? Why our faith shatters? The Sumit Soni, uh, the faith, you know, because it's a really, really difficult, very difficult thing. Faith means in Sanskrit, say, Vishwas. And the Vishwas, then Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, if you can develop the Vishwas, the faith, then you have achieved. So obviously it will, this time you are thinking in this way, it shattered. Don't worry, again, 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 go on trying, go on trying. And then one day you will find the whole thing, you, you have overcome all those. So the sh faith is shattering, is natural. But going back once again to the faith, that is the uniqueness that you should do. Shuparna Ghosh, how to make my life, how to make my mind strong and healthy through which I can realize God? Well, Shuparna Ghosh. See, so Shuparna Ji, I don't know whether you have taken the initiation or not. Uh, the mind should be strong, strong in the sense if you read the biography of the holy people, if you read the biography of Ma Saradamani Devi, I would suggest you a book if you have not read already, the by Swami Gambirananda Ji, the life of Ma Saradamani Devi. There you will find how challenging it was for Ma Saradamani Devi, completely illiterate lady, and in that situation, but how she could overcome all that. But don't stop praying to God. Don't stop praying to God. And you will get the strength of your mind. And through the prayer, your mind will also be purified. That's why go on. Lord Jesus said, knock the door, it will open unto you. Knocking means prayer. And you know what is prayer? Conversation with the God. And it is a one-way conversation. 
go on telling everything to God. Talk with him. Feel that he is by your side. And when you are afraid, when you are in difficulty, talk to God. Say all those things that you would like to say to your very close friend. Say that. He is your friend. And then one day you will feel your mind is strong, can withstand all the other things, and you will get the peace. That is the blessings of joy. Uh, the next question is from Milan Chattopadhyay. Through Bhakti Yoga, we can realize God as Sri Ramakrishna said. So if I realize God through Bhakti, then what is the role of a Guru in our spiritual life? Why I should take initiation from Guru? The, 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 of course, the without Guru, as I mentioned in my talk, the without Guru, it is very difficult to make the progress. A personality like Shankaracharya, he also accepted the, the Guru. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna himself, he realized all those before the Gurus came. Even then, he accepted the Guru. Why he accepted the Guru? Because this is the way one can go. Otherwise, it is very difficult. There may be the chances that you will misunderstand because you don't know what is called devotion. By reading the books, if you can understand, but the, when the Guru will say, do this, uh, that will be sufficient for you. You need not to bother about anything. Just go on practicing that and believe in the words of the Guru and you will reach to the goal. So that is why the devotion, the love that is already there within you, it may be small devotion, the love that you feel for your family and near and dear ones. When you are going to take it to the God, that means you have to expand that and you have to embrace each and everything. You need the blessings of Guru who has already practiced it and then he will guide it. So, the so last, hmm. last question, Jasmine, uh, how to overcome from anxiety of happening something bad? So, so from anxiety that we suffer, it is in our mind. The, if the anxiety we can withheld for some time because the mind means the thought. The flow of thoughts are coming and creating all this problem. And suppose you send a strong thought into your mind and push back that anxiety, the thoughts that were making you anxious, then you are free from the anxiety. That is the only way because it is only a thought and other people cannot help you. Through the medicine, you may go into slumber, go into sleep. But the, again, when you get up, again, that those thoughts will cross your mind, will create problem in your mind. So only way to put a strong, positive thought in the mind, and then you go free from that. You know, in English, they say, this shall also pass. This shall also pass. When the anxiety is coming, what will happen if this is this, if that is that? Just go on telling in your mind, there is someone and whom people call as God, as mother, I am just praying to her, mother be with me, and you will feel that is going slowly passing. I have sent out a message to all our devotees, quoting Ma Saradamani Devi, the great assurance that that there he she is telling that I am there as your mother, divine mother, all powerful mother. So obviously don't be afraid. And then she assured God, Sri Ramakrishna is also with you. Have this type of words, positive words, put it in your mind and go on thinking, I don't care about anything because my father and mother are there. Just, just go, imagine you go and sit on the lap of your mother, the divine mother, and your mother is protecting you. You'll be free from anxiety. Thank you.
this lady uh, Sumit Soni. Swami ji should be believe in matching Kundalini while getting married. Oh, uh, no, not Kundalini. The, the Kundali. Uh, Kundali. Kundali. See, that is that is also the tradition is there because there are different type of people. But ma'am, I don't think this is the, uh, the this class uh, the, to answer this. But uh, it depends on the belief. And in the olden days, people used to see that through. And people they have, they know how to calculate because of the right time of your birth, then uh, the star and the their movement, their positions that influence. So maybe we'll discuss this question some other time, and you can ask those uh, astrologers they can explain it in the best way and thank you friends thank you for this before i conclude let me sh tell you that we every three months we publish one this uh, e-zine electronic magazine and it's is a title is name is chicago calling and some uh, different uh, and the articles will be there and it's a very good reading, you can read. This time, it, the discussion is on guru and the spiritual gurus. Friends, all my lectures that I have given under different title, the saga of the soul, then why should we meditate, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, these, it has come in six different, uh, what is that called? USB. The, USB, the flash, the flash, flash drive. And if you like to purchase this flash drive individual, it's $15. But all the six, and there is a supravatam, the chanting from Monday to Sunday, the whole week, different type of chanting in the morning, including that is a six, and total amount, it is $90, $15 each. This is the announcement and thank you very much. Let us say peace three times and we conclude. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Sri Ram Krishna Arpanamastu Peace, peace, peace unto all.